Hello and welcome back. Today we have another prestigious pen, considered a grail pen for many, this being the Sailor 1911 Large. Throughout this video, you may find that I am generally comparing this to another pen in this price range that I recently reviewed, that being the Pilot Custom 823. Watch that video here if you haven't already. My first impression was that it felt like a high quality pen. The resin on the 1911 feels so sturdy and substantial. It feels even more sold than the Pilot Custom A23. It's a classic cigar shaped pen, which is my favorite design. However, I did expect it to be larger, in length at least, especially uncapped. I don't think I would enjoy the 1911 standard, which is even smaller than this. This pen does come in some really lovely colors. Ideally, I'd get the Royal Tangerine color, but I believe it was limited to North America. The pen feels a little short in my hand for writing comfortably unposted. I tend to always prefer to write without posting the pen, but this is just personal preference. Posting the 1911 large does make quite a difference and is a lot more comfortable being longer and heavier. I had the same experience with the Sailor Prophet, which I also felt was a lot better when posted. The Sailor nib is 21 karat gold and has their anchor logo and 1911 on it. Here next to a Quebeco number no. 6 nib, we can see that the Sailor is slightly smaller. The Pilot A23's nib was slightly larger than the Quebeco, and that gave the pen nice proportions. This pen on the other hand is shorter, and yet I still feel like the nib is too small for the pen. That's just a gut feeling though when I hold it, which is only magnified by always needing to have it posted. The filling mechanism is the Sailor proprietary converter. Not really much to say about it. I think for the price of this pen, or any pen over $300, I would hope for a piston filler compared to a converter. In saying that, converters are easy to use, and this also means you could use Sailor cartridges if you wanted to. I'm filling the pen with Robert Oster's Cafe Crema. This pen has a fine nib, and I am writing on Tomoe River paper. You can really feel that Sailor pencil-like feedback they are known for straight away. It's very different. With this fine nib, I can write perfectly while applying little to no pressure at all on the page, something most of my other pens would never be able to achieve. It can really glide across the paper. It took a lot of writing to really get a sense of my opinion and if I like this feel. And overall, I think while I did somewhat, it doesn't have that extra something that the Pilot A23 has. This actually comes as a shock to me, as for the last few years, and even as I reviewed the A23, I told myself that the Sailor 1911 was probably going to be the pen I wanted the most, out of all others. However, it is not the pen's fault for not living up to expectations I had materialized out of years of watching reviews for this pen. Now that it is in my hand though, I question who the pen is for. Expensive price tag but then uses a converter, 21 karat gold nib in a bland black and rhodium trim, amazing ink flow from such a fine nib, but it has that well known scratchy feedback. I think this pen leans more to the boardroom executive side than the writing enthusiast side. All of this while being $100 Australian more than the Pilot Custom 823. But don't get me wrong, I've seen enough reviews and love for this pen, but I just don't think it's for everyone. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Sailor 1911 Large, or even the standard size, or the extra large King of Pens. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and goodbye.